Mr. Davies' Dose of Science. If this is your first time learning with us, welcome. If not, welcome back. Hello, everyone. This is Mr. Davies, and Seamus is back there somewhere, laying on the chair. I hope you're doing well and you're feeling healthy. Let's go ahead and get to it. Today, we're going to cover third class levers. If you have access to Canvas, you can access that on a laptop, a tablet, or even a cell phone. If you cannot print the pages, that's okay. I appreciate you tuning into the videos daily. If you do have your activity booklet or your worksheets, feel free to pause as needed and fill in your guided reading. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the packet first. Bear with my computer. There's too many windows open. <laughs> okay. So as we take a look at the packet, there's a number of things I do point out along the way. First off, vocabulary terms, especially the four parts of a lever. Remember, these parts remain the same. The differences between the three different parts, three different classes of lever, are that the parts are arranged in a different order or in a different way. So look for that as we go along. There are also plenty of examples, illustrations for all three types of levers throughout your packet. Different parts are labeled, so certainly look for that as you go through the packet. Don't forget to define your vocabulary terms. Definitions can be found throughout the packet, and also the last two pages of the reader are a glossary strictly for your vocabulary terms. Your guided reading today is on pages 12 and 13. It's actually page 17 in your packet, but the reader pages are pages 12 and 13. Make sure you come back to this section and fill in the missing words. For your guided reading. This is page 12 of your reader. Your reader is also available in Canvas, and I'll show you those links here in just a couple minutes. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and learn by reading. Class 3 levers. A class 3 lever is another arrangement of the lever. In a class 3 lever, the fulcrum is on one end, and the effort is applied between the fulcrum and the load. With this kind of lever, the direction of effort is not changed. The load moves in the same direction as the effort. The gain offered by a class 3 lever is one of distance. Please notice that the fulcrum is on one end, the effort is applied in the center, and the load is on the opposite end. Here's a good illustration of an example. A fishing pole is a class 3 lever. The hand placed at the end of the fishing pole acts as the fulcrum, and the load is the fish that's caught at the opposite end. The hand between the fulcrum and the fish applies the effort. The hand applying effort moves a short distance to move the fish a longer distance. The cost is effort. A hammer used to drive a nail is another class 3 lever. When you hold the hammer's handle, your elbow acts as the fulcrum. The load is the resistance offered by the material into which you are driving the nail. The hitting end of the hammer moves farther than your lower arm does to apply force. The hitting end gains not only distance, 
but speed to do its job. Many sports are played with class three levers. Baseball bats, hockey sticks, golf clubs, and tennis and badminton rackets all gain speed because the hitting end moves faster than your arm. Class three levers also include many tools, shovels, pitchforks, hose, and brooms are all class three levers. They provide a gain in distance. Your arms and legs also work as class three levers. Where are the fulcrum and load for these class three levers? Can you determine where the effort is applied? Class three levers can work together. The place where the levers join is the fulcrum and the effort is applied between the fulcrum and the load. Tweezers and ice tongs are examples of double class three levers. Catapults. In ancient times and in the Middle Ages, people used war machines called catapults. Some of them worked as class two and class three levers to shoot arrows and hurl heavy rocks. One end of the lever acted as the fulcrum. A rock load was placed at the opposite end of the lever. Beyond the load, a rope was attached to a windlass or a type of wheel and axle. It pulled back the lever. This is a class two lever. When the rope was released, the lever propelled the load a long distance with great force. Can you see how the lever throwing the rock is a class three lever? Where is the load? Where is the effort? And where is the fulcrum? Okay, that finishes the reading portion for today. Let's go back to your packet. I'd like to remind you the importance of filling in your guided reading. It'll help you remember what was covered today. As we go through the rest of your packet, make sure you say the arrangement of the parts of a lever for each of the three classes. Also, there are really good diagrams for each class in your packet already. Don't forget, the first class lever has the fulcrum in the middle. The second class lever has the load in the middle. And the third class lever has the effort in the middle. Again, there are math extensions response pages, examples of all three types of lever. A crowbar is a great example of a first class lever, fulcrum in the middle. A wheelbarrow is a great example of a second class lever, load in the middle. And a broom is a good example of a third class lever, effort applied between the fulcrum and the load. As you look at the rest of the activities throughout your packet, please label any class three levers as you proceed. Today we do have a super bonus question coming to you from the original Mr. Davies and Mrs. Davies. My mother loves to row her boat. And the question is, 
when you're rowing a boat, I think we realize that the oars are certainly a type of lever. But what class lever is the oar when you're rowing a boat? Remember, as you row the boat, you put the oar in the water and then pull it so that the boat will move along. So where's the effort? Where's the fulcrum? And where is the load? I'll be honest with you. I got this one wrong until I really thought about it quite a bit. So thank you to the original Mr. Davies. Great question. I'd also like to give a number of shout outs today. Um, all of you who have logged into Canvas, you're doing a great job. I really appreciate it. This is Mr. Davies. I hope you have a great day and keep on learning. If you learned something today, please like this video. If you think there is more you can learn, then click subscribe or consider coming back again tomorrow. The information, likenesses, and opinions in this video are the intellectual property of Mr. Mike Davies. While Mr. Davies does refer to other works owned by others, those resources are either parts of a public school district curriculum or they are readily available through open forums on the internet. Mr. Davies does offer his thanks and appreciation to any entity he has chosen to refer to or gather sound bites or clips from to emphasize his lessons. Mr. Davies is currently a professional member of the teaching staff for Central Dolphin School District in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and is making, producing, and publishing these videos for the benefit of his students and other students during the current lockdown crisis. Mr. Davies does not make claim to all of the ideas and resources referenced in his videos. However, he does claim responsibility and rights to his likeness, opinions, and the academic content of these videos. He does not grant permission for any entity to copy or duplicate any portion of this video or any of his videos for private or personal gain.